the Caliphate, a form of rule in Islam that lasted for almost 13 centuries, from the death of the Prophet Muhammad to the overthrow of the last Ottoman Caliph in 1924. The Arabic term for Caliph is Khalifa, which actually in essence simply means a, a successor or a, a deputy. The ruler of the Islamic world would call himself Khalifa Rasulullah, the successor of God's message. Through the centuries, the title of Caliph is a term that has been used and at times abused. In June 2014, a militant group calling itself the Islamic State and Iraq and the Levant, or ISIL, declared the establishment of a caliphate. A call rejected by most Muslims around the world. ISIL proclaimed its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, a caliph. Appropriating a title imbued with religious and political significance and casting a dark shadow over a rich history. It is Caliph Baghdadi. He is destroying or attempting to destroy much of the legacy those caliphs had wanted to preserve and to, to foster. This is the story of a title that originated 1,400 years ago, that spanned one of the greatest empires the world has ever known. This is the story of the Caliph. Medina, Saudi Arabia. Last resting place of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. It was here, in June of the year 632, that he died after a brief illness. The Prophet left behind a young and vibrant Islamic state, uniting most of the tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, with Medina as its capital. Of course, صعب جدا انه اي شخص يقدر يجمع بين هالصفتين يعني بس كان في مصلحه بطبيعه الحال لاستمرار نشر الرساله اللي كان هو الواجب الاساسي انه يكون في قائد Ten years earlier Muhammad and a group of his early followers who would come to be known as the Muhajirun or the emigrants had fled Mecca and persecution by the pagan leaders of their own tribe, Quraysh. The Prophet and the emigrants were given shelter by the citizens of Medina, who would thereafter be called Al Ansar, meaning the supporters. Together, these two groups formed the Sahaba, the close companions of the Prophet. His successor would come from one of them. 
الأنصار شعروا بأنهم أهل البلد وأهل العدد ولذلك من حقهم أن يتولوا هذا الأمر بعد الرسول In a humble building that used to stand on the site of this public garden, the supporters gathered to decide which of them would be the Prophet's successor. But two of the leading emigrants, Abu Bakr and Omar, interrupted their deliberations. المهاجرون ردوا أنه نحن الذين تركنا بلادنا وهاجرنا نحن الأهل الإسلام الأول إلى غير ذلك كانت المحاججة مبنية على أساس ديني After hours of heated debate the claim of the emigrants was judged to have precedence أبو بكر قال أن ترضون عمر قال لا أتقدم عليك أنت الذي كنت تتولى الصلاة بعد الرسول أمدد يدك أبايعك لذلك أسرع وبايعه هذه السرعة هي التي حلت المشكلة لأنه بعد أن بايع عمر قدم كبار الأنصار فبايعوا In a humble building in Medina a new age had begun A new title written into history. A title that would ring down the ages. The first caliph of Islam, the successor of Muhammad, was to be Abu Bakr Siddiq. The following day, Abu Bakr's position was confirmed when the Muslim community gave Bayah an oath of allegiance to the new caliph. O oh people, a big task has been assigned to me. Now it is beyond doubt that I have been elected your emir. Although I'm not better than you, obey me as long as I obey Allah and His Prophet. When I disobey Him and His Prophet, then obey me not. Abu Bakr was the first of four who would be known as the Rashidun, the rightly guided caliphs. They were all people who had been very close to the Prophet Muhammad during his lifetime, as his companions, as those who had converted early to Islam and had dedicated themselves to uh, the formation of the early community, the spreading of the message, who had fought in early campaigns and were intimates of the Prophet Muhammad in, in all ways. وذهب إلى السوق حتى لقاه في الطريق عمر بن الخطاب وصحابة آخرين قالوا له إلى أين يا أبي بكر قال إلى السوق قال له البارحة بويعت أمير المسلمين واليوم تذهب إلى السوق قال وكيف أطعم أعيالي قال ارجع بنا نعطيك من بيت المال أبو بكر was a profoundly spiritual and modest man But when some of the Arabian tribes rose up in rebellion, refusing to submit to the new caliphate, he was quick to act. As a merchant, as someone who knows the whole of Arabia, he knows all the tribal details, the genealogies, the clans, the weaknesses, the strengths, who can be employed against whom, and he transforms himself into this extraordinary, powerful man. Abu Bakr declared war on the rebel tribes and after a year of heavy fighting he emerged victorious. His attention was now turned to the territory of the two superpowers of the era, the Sassanids in Persia 
and the Byzantines of the Eastern Roman Empire. In an audacious move, taking on both empires at once, he launched the Muslim conquests. But crucially, he gave his men orders to preserve, not destroy. Man yakra hadhi al-wasaya, yashur wa ka'anna Aba Bakr radiyallahu an qad saga meithaq al-jinib. Fahuwa yusi qadatahu بأن لا يتعرض للنساء لا يتعرض لكبار السن لا يتعرض لمتدينين في معابدهم Abu Bakr's commander in the east, Khalid made good ground in Iraq fighting the Sassanids but the four armies sent to attack Byzantine garrisons in the Levant were meeting heavy resistance On the Caliph's order, Khalid quickly moved his men across the desert to the Western Front. In August 634, on the fields of Ajnadin, here in Palestine, the Muslim armies gathered to take on the might of Byzantium in battle. When Khalid bin Walid with the four وجد أن الروم قد حشدوا حشدا هائلا وأن الجيوش الإسلامية كل قيادة تقاتل من غير تنسيق مع الأخرى فقال لهم كلمة مهمة قال إن فرقتكم أنفع لعدوكم من أي مدد فأعطوني القيادة في اليوم الأول فحسم المعركة في اليوم الأول But in the wake of victory at Ajnadin, and after just two years as caliph, Abu Bakr died at the age of 61.